my my wife she sent me a text message asking me how is the uh, how is your new wife because uh, you know I've spent the last five days building this rocket I haven't really had much contact with her or anything so I've just kind of sat here building a rocket and uh, but she she uh, I, I don't think she has the same enthusiasm, but she understands. Uh, she enjoys the uh, the launches as well, and um, well, she married a bit of a crazy guy, so. <laughs> but yeah, my, my family think, I think largely my family think it's quite cool. But uh, I guess I am regarded as a bit of a geek, but I'm fine with that. Well, to me, the rocketry symbolizes like our desire to go a bit beyond ourselves, you know, up, up into space. I know, uh, obviously, a lot of rockets are used for weapons, but um, in my case, my enthusiasm is uh, is born out of a, a love of the space program and uh, the um, you know a desire to to get to uh, far off places um, that we wouldn't ordinarily be able to reach, and so. Uh, for me, I find it a... Uh, one day I would love to be able to make a launch into space. I guess I'm feeling a little bit um, stressed at the moment, but I'm sure everything will be fine. I just have uh, quite a few things left to do before uh, the launch. <sighs> Paint the rocket. Mm. Why the electronics? Add the rod. Vent holes. Do I need a couple of tops? Yes. <laughs> My name is Les Strand. I'm a rocketry enthusiast. I've always had a, an interest in space and rocketry and that kind of thing, but uh, actually I started my love of all things that fly with aircraft. And I did a bachelor's degree in aeronautical engineering and uh, led that on to a master's degree in astronautics and space engineering and finished up with a PhD in computational uh, mechanics. After six days, that's the first time I've seen it all together. <laughs> it's going to be uh, really exciting, I think. Great Britain, we have the uh, United Kingdom Rocketry Association, and um, that is basically a group of rocketry enthusiasts, amateur rocketeers who have come together to uh, fly rockets up and down the country. And uh, yeah, we meet most weekends somewhere in the UK to fly rockets. We have all manner of eccentric people in the UK, uh, a little bit uh, off the wall, not quite normal. And I think rocketry fits nicely into the slot of the eccentric English. And, well, British, I should say British. 
For this weekend, for the festival, I started packing seven days before the event, getting all the caravan ready, getting the van ready, getting all the dog stuff ready. So I took, I brought six dogs with me and loading up six rockets, two helicopters, one glider, two telescopes. And that's about it. I also do model helicopters, high power model rocketry, astronomy, mountain biking, scuba diving, flyball and dog shows. And there's probably more, but they're my main hobbies. Dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. I was always, I always had my, my head inside a book. Um, I was always playing around with a chemistry set. I was always trying to invent things or drawing things on, on pieces of paper, designs for spacecraft and things like that. You know, rather than kicking a football around or doing what normal sort of nine or ten year old boys do. I'm sort of known within the village where I live. As the, as the rocket man. I've lived there 13 years, and most people don't know me by my first name because I'm seen walking up onto the common with a rocket in my hand, only a small one, and I, a bit like the Pied Piper of Hamlin. You know, I often have children following me. Five, four, three, two, one, launch. Whoa! Hey. Hey. That was good, eh? Hey. I think she will be glad to see me on uh, Saturday and she'll be glad to finally uh, see what I've been doing for these days. I hope that she'll appreciate the rocket. <laughs> I was clean and clean shaven. <laughs> Massive. How did you manage to pay for it in time? I don't know. I had 20 minutes of sleep last night. You're joking? No. Oh dear. I'm glad he was building this not at home, because I think there might have been lots and lots of mess and lots of glue. The last time he was building something at home, it was a very small one, and the cats nearly ended up glued to the patio outside, so. I'm quite glad <laughs> he wasn't at home. <laughs> he has decided that I can name it, so I've decided to call the rocket Chaos. Um, I think it's quite fitting, because when we get home, it's going to be Chaos trying to fit that in our little two-bedroom house. <laughs> when he's not got a project going, um, everything's perfect. We tend to um, just have a normal, normal life, aside from the kitchen being filled up with rocket motors and glue and all sorts of bits. <laughs> you can make yourself useful. Can I? Yeah, stand over there. Really? Yeah, and pull. You want the nose off? Yeah. Twist. I hate this game. No.
I'm really happy about it because it actually went up for the second flight today. I've only just bought it and it's gone up. It's perfect, really. The first one we had to go right the way into the field, the second one we only had to go about 20 feet away. <laughs> I really like it. I'm excited about launching them. I like that really big one that's down there, yeah, a really big black one. It's quite big and it's going to make a lot of noise. When I'm sliding it down the uh, launch rail, I'll be panicking quite a lot, actually, because you're thinking all the time, did I forget something, have I done everything, did I insert the igniter properly, all these kind of things. And I think we're ready for launch. And we're launching in five, four, three, two, one. See, big men do cry. <laughs> Everything was perfect. Textbook flight. Absolutely textbook flight. Let's go. Go on then. Let's go. <laughs> I guess seven days of long hours, a long day of preparing, and everybody being so helpful and friendly and nice, and uh, it just all of those emotions bubbled up at once. 